Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, hallelujah, hallelujah, good morning, afternoon, and evening, my social media family. It is so good to be back on, hallelujah, hallelujah, I'm trying to fix stuff, just come on a few minutes to make sure all is well, and to make sure that I have everything set up. I really missed you guys. I really, really missed you guys. Hallelujah. So I'm just on to check and make sure that we are good. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I hope all is well. Look like everything is a little crooked. Maybe... Let me make sure I just got y'all right on the stand. Hallelujah. It is so good to be back on. As you've heard in many times, which it is, this is the day that the Lord has made. A day we didn't even think we were going to see. I will and you will be glad. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. We got to rejoice and be glad in it. Regardless of what's going on, we still have to rejoice and be glad in it so i'm back on here again i've really missed you guys to share a word from the lord oh lord y'all better start praying because this was a struggle for me for the past two weeks but until i called my pastor this morning hallelujah and he was able to set me free on something in our converse, I'm telling you, when we went in early this morning, I've been up early. And uh, sometimes the enemy, because remember, he goes after our head. And he even likes to keep you in a state of confusion. And so, you know, he must have kind of sensed I was in a state of confusion for the past couple of weeks. But little do he, do he know how God will send someone just for confirmation and clarity i'm telling you to set you free honey whomever the sun set free and it's not just physically but even inwardly you are free indeed oh my goodness so we're, i'm gonna take my time i'm gonna try to because i'm excited because i got free on an issue amen i got free on an issue today and i'm bringing it to you with the word that he has given me and we got work to do so i need y'all to hang in here with me because i got a lot of meat stuff up in here up in here and so i'm excited to share it with you and so uh hang in here because we got work to do for real we got some work to do and it's all it's it's, it's gonna be okay it's gonna be all right amen i'm here to help steer this boat and we're going to make it to the mainland. Amen. So I really, really miss you guys. I really hope that all is well. May not be perfect, but I hope all is well. I hope that you are continuing to strengthen your relationship with the Lord as I always encourage you to. I want you to build and strengthen your relationship with the Lord like no other. Amen. Because uh, you hear me say it all the time, and I'm going to keep saying it because it's in my spirit. The Lord placed it there, and obviously I'm going to be keep on saying it until he seals my lips from saying it. The hourglass is up. He's almost ready to come back for his people. He's almost, they almost ready. They almost, got to say almost, but eventually it won't be almost anymore. Amen. All of this will pass away, but the word of God will always remain. So we have to continue to keep it in our hearts because he's looking at the hearts of his people. Amen. Don't get me started. I just wanted to come on to make sure that I just a little few minutes early, but now I'm ready. Seems like, you know, we annihilated all technical difficulties right now in the name of Jesus. And so we're going to get right into it. I'm going to try and I'm being honest, but y'all that know me know I'm going to try. Not the belated hour. I ain't going to make no promises. Y'all hear me say it all the time. I'm a try. But even if we, you know, just let the Holy Spirit, let God be God. Let him do what he came to do. I'm a willing vessel. I'm submitted and surrendered unto him now. He is taking over. So I'm not getting off of here until I am fully released until he has lifted. So I'm just giving you a warning 
right about now. Amen. So before I get started, as always, let us pray and enter into the throne room in the presence of the Lord together. Amen. Heavenly Father, I come to you again, Lord God, with my social media family. I thank you, Lord God, for every life under the sound of my voice. And I thank you for every life that may view and see this message, Lord God, th from, you, from you through me in the name of Jesus. Lord, continue to guide us in every problem that we face and every decision that we have to make today in the name of Jesus. But first and foremost, Lord God, forgive us for our sins, Lord God. Forgive us for sins known and unknown in the name of Jesus. Lord God, continue to help us to keep our eyes stayed on thee. Help us to trust you like never before. Lord, give us a new level of trust, Lord God, because what we are about to enter into some of your people, the levels that we are about to go to, Lord God, we're going to need more trust. We're going to need, we're going to need more faith. We're going to need more trust in what we see, what we hear, and we got to trust what we say in the name of Jesus, especially if what we're speaking and saying is according to your word and is according to your will for our lives in the name of Jesus. So Lord, let this word saturate within us, Lord God, let it cut where it needs to cut, let it heal where it needs to heal and let it deliver where it needs to deliver so that we can continue to keep our eyes stayed on you so that we can continue to seek ye first the kingdom so that all can be added unto us. Lord, this is your platform. Have your way because everything was made by you for you. Have your way. Now, I decrease so that you can increase, Lord God, in me and through each of us together spiritually. Lord, we love you and we praise you and we thank you for it now. In Jesus' mighty and awesome name, amen, amen, amen. Let's get started. Oh, Lord, word of encouragement today. Why don't you trust what you see? When what you see doesn't show what they say. I'm going to say it again. I know kind of fast. It got me too. Why don't you trust what you see? When what you see doesn't show what they say. Amen. Why don't you trust what you see? When what you see doesn't show what they say. So let's get your Bibles out. Your, whatever you want to get. Get your Bibles out. Hold up, I see some squiggly stuff. Okay, get your Bibles out, your devices. Uh, we got work to do, and I'm going to work through it according to how the Holy Spirit sets the pace for me. Amen. But we got some word to do. We're going into the book of Jeremiah. Amen. And I'm coming from the Amplified Version because tell, he tells me to stay right there in that version. Amen. But praise be to the Lord for different versions to help us to interpret and to understand rightly along with the help of the Holy Spirit. So go with me to first chapter. Um, we're going to go to is Jeremiah chapter 23 verses 1 through 4. Then we're going to drop down to verses 16 to 24. And then we're going to drop down to 30 to 32. That's all in Jeremiah first. And then we're going to go all the way over to the book of James in chapter 5, verse 8. But let me start you off again. Go with me right now to Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 1 through 4. Then the next verses we will go to is 16 to 24. And then the next verses will be 30 to 32. All in the book of Jeremiah. Amen. Somebody can put that down if they like. If I, you want me to repeat it one more time, because I might got some latecomers, because I can't see. Key scripture, Jeremiah chapter 23. We're in chapter 23. We're going to, th we're going to three uh, different groups of uh, verses. The first verse we're going through to is verse uh, chapter 23, verses 1 through 4. Then we're going to go to 16 through 24. Then we're going to go to verse 30 to 32 amen i'm coming out the amplified version hallelujah let me make sure i have it up and it says woe to the shepherds civil leaders rulers who are destroying and scattering the sheep of my pasture says the lord therefore thus says the lord the god of israel in regard to the shepherds who care for and feed my people, you have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not attended to them. Hear this. I am about to visit and attend to you for the evil of your deeds, says the Lord. 
Then I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries to which I have driven them and bring them back to their folds and pastures, and they will be fruitful and multiply. I will set up shepherds over them who will feed them, and they will not be afraid any longer, nor be terrified, nor will any be missing, says the Lord. Now go with me to verse, drop down to verse 16 to 24, and it says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, do not listen to the words of the false prophets who prophesy to you. They are teaching you worthless things and are leading you into fertility. They speak a vision of their own mind and imaginations and not true from the mouth of the Lord. They are continually saying to those who despise me and my word, the Lord has said, you will have peace. And they say to everyone who walks after the stubbornness of his own heart, no evil will come on you, but who among them has stood in the counsel of the Lord, that he who perceive and hear his word who has marked his word noticing and observing and paying attention to it and has actually heard it behold the tempest of the lord has gone forth in wrath a whirling tempest it will whirl and burst on the heads of the wicked the anger of the lord will not turn back until he has set in motion and accomplished the thoughts and intentions of his heart in the last days you will clearly understand it I did not send these counterfeit prophets, yet they ran. I did not speak to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, then they would have caused my people to hear my words. Then they would have turned my people from evil way and from the evil of their decisions and deeds. Am I God who is at hand, says the Lord, and not a God far away? Can anyone hide himself in secret places so that I cannot see him, says the Lord? Do I not feel heaven and earth, says the Lord? Go with me to now drop down to verse 30 to 32. It says, therefore, behold, hear this. I am against the counterfeit prophets, says the Lord. I am descending on them with punishment, these prophets who steal my words from, whom, from one another imitating the words of the true prophets hear this i am against the prophets says the lord who use their own deceitful tongues and says thus says the lord hear this i am against those who have prophesied false and made up dreams says the lord and have told them and have made my people error and go astray by their lies and by their reckless boasting Yet I did not send them or command them, nor do they benefit and enhance the life of these people in the slightest way, says the Lord. Oh, it's about to get up in here. Up, I feel I'm getting goosebumps in the right now in the atmosphere. It, they backing up. I feel it backing up. We're going we're gonna to deal with the elephant and the tigers, the tiger devils in the atmosphere. Amen. Now go with me to James chapter 5, verse 8. Amplified version says, you too, be patient, strengthen your heart, keep them energized and firmly committed to God because the coming of the Lord is near. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let there be a blessing added to the reading of God's word. Woo chow. And we're going to go through each of them. Amen. Let's go back. Hallelujah. Let's start at the top. Jeremiah. And we're in the book of Jeremiah. This was, a, this was around when the coming of the Messiah, the righteous branch. of, the, And it was also about the prophets being denounced. So this is all God. The conversation the Lord with dealing with Jeremiah and these prophets. You see what I'm saying? leaders everyone across the earth he's dealing with his people first verse jeremiah chapter 23 we're looking at verses one through four he says woe to the shepherds civil leaders rulers who are destroying and scattering the sheep of my pasture says the lord Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, in regard to the shepherds who care for and feed my people, you have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not attended to them. Hear this. I am about to visit and attend to you. 
for the evil of your deeds, says the Lord. And that's verse 1 and 2. So clearly, this is the Lord. Take it up with him. For those of you, it doesn't even matter. Degree or no degree. Those of you that are praying on people. Those of you, and I'm talking to, I'm talking people in the kingdom and out of the kingdom. Backslitters, everybody. Everybody, the whole world. You know what I'm saying? Everybody. Jesus died for the world. Everybody. Everything in the atmosphere. Those of you who are speaking and saying things into people's spirits. And you are scattering them. And you, you have their attention. You have their spirits in your hand. And you are mistreating them. God said, I'm about to visit and attend to you. So he about to get up on, he about to come up, he about to come down an avenue near you. He about to get real up close and personal with you. Amen. So see some of us that here it is, whether you are a newborn believer or not, and I'm talking spiritually, anybody that mishandles you in the spirit realm, I'm telling you right now, whoever you are and you know it just because you think that you are a little more spiritually mature than others, God about to come and attend to you. He about to get right up close and personal because you're not going to mistreat his people or his sheep any kind of way. I'm going to say that again. You're not going to treat God's people or his sheep or his belief anybody of no matter what level of spirituality maturity they are you're not going to treat them any kind of way verse 3 then it says then i will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries to which i have driven them and bring them back to their folds and pastures and they will be fruitful and multiply so to the sheep some of you if you are connected to people that have spiritually damaged you you are spiritually crooked i'm telling you right now verse 3 says he's about to gather everyone that is spiritually crooked globally and he's going to bring you to a place where you will be fruitful and multiply. Real simple. Just hold on. Just hold on. Trust. See what I'm saying? God is asking. Why don't you trust what you see when what you see doesn't show what they say? So that's why you hear me say all the time, y'all better check folks out. You better check things out, period. It's not just anything that you're involved in. You see what I'm saying? Anything that you decide to join. Anything you decide to work with, you got to check it out. And especially if God shows you. Sometimes God will show us stuff and we'd be like, nah, nah, that can't be God. Like, yes, it is. It is what I showed you. Maybe I'm seeing it wrong. No, you're seeing it right. It is what I showed you. Oh, Lord. And especially dealing with certain family members. See, God is dealing with the inner people, the inner uh, people too even amongst our children you see a spirit on your children you like but that's my baby no 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 no. your baby is crooked is you going is you going to discipline them like god discipline and chastise us or you just going to keep on masking it because that's your baby no that's not what i see it is what you see god said because i showed you so why don't you trust what you see when what you see doesn't show what they say, especially when people say things to you? Because there's a lot of you saying, I love the Lord. See, God, I told y'all from the beginning in my core people, I've been telling them since the beginning of the year, God going to start with the, it's going to start, he's going to start with the core of you, meaning your closest people, your family and go outward, expand outward. He's going to show you who is really for him and who's not, who really have him. Because people walking around saying, yeah, I'm the church. God, like, I do not live in that vessel. Ooh, hell, it must be, it's in the atmosphere because there ain't even nowhere on my notes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He said he don't, he is not in that vessel. That vessel haven't invited him in. That vessel always keep him on the porch looking in. Yeah, the vessel speak the words. Yeah, I love the Lord. Whatever God want, I love the Lord. The Lord, like, I ain't in that. Because they won't even let me in 
to help them to clean that up. I ain't touching that with a 10 foot pole. They ain't even coming to me so that I can wash them and make them white as snow. Amen. Let's keep going. Okay. Holy Spirit. We're going to roll with it. But verse three basically says for those of us, for all of us, everybody, you are going through a spiritual imbalance. You are spiritually crooked. Some stuff is in your ear that is clouding up your mind. Some people have made you the, um, interpret the word of God wrongly. God said he's going to gather his remnant. He said, my flock, he's going to gather them out of all the countries to which he's driven them. So some places you are supposed to be, but see, it's the connections, it's the voices, it's the people that you allowed in your space. Amen. That has got you spirit. They've been speaking into your spirit things and it's like treating you like a puppet. They've been pulling your strings. They make you think that it's God. But I just said, and y'all heard me say on many videos, God said, he, you, you're not going to keep on saying, thus said the Lord. And he didn't say that. Amen. Verse four, he said, I will set shepherds over them who will feed them and they will not be afraid any longer, nor be terrified, nor will any be missing, says the Lord. So some of you are connected to people, regardless of the gift and the title and the degree. But what has been put into you over a long period of time has not helped you at all. And God said in verse 4, he will set a shepherd. He will, he will bring you someone else. But see, you got to get to a place to be ready to receive. Because see, some of us, we are, as they say, thank you, Holy Spirit. Help me with it. Help me with it. Here it is. Thank you. Some of you have old ways. You're set in your ways because you're so used to a particular person or you're so used to a particular atmosphere. You're so used to a particular thing that when God ready to show you a new thing, you can't receive it because you're still cuddled up with the old thing. And the old thing ain't good for you because the old thing has been keeping you spiritually bound and spiritually crooked. I said it. I got all, I got God and all of heaven behind me. I knew this wasn't going to be one of them easy where y'all better hold on and don't get off my boat. Amen. Because I'm going to get us there. We're going to get there safely. Amen. Real simple. God is not hard. Amen. Whew. Okay, Holy Spirit. Let's move on. He says, go down to, now we're going to go to verses 16 to 24. It says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, do not listen to the words of the false prophets who prophesied to you. They are teaching you worthless things and are leading you into fertility. They speak a vision of their own mind and imagination and not truth from the mouth of the Lord. God said that plain and simple. We ain't got to get deep with that because God gave us common sense. We don't have to sit here and be like, what that mean? It means exactly what I just said. God said, do not listen to the words of the false prophets who prophesied to you. There are some people, whether they actually come out and say they are prophet or not. That's why you got to pay attention to the words and you got to pay attention to the actions and you got to pay attention with the discerning of the spirit that is on people. Some of y'all ain't paying attention to the spirit. Some of y'all think about when you hear the word spirits and stuff, you get all kooky spooky. Baby, you better open your eyes so that you can see. Amen. You got to see. Some of y'all be going into things and making decisions with your eyes closed. Some of y'all pay more, y'all give more preparation and more attention to man than you do God. And God's word is right here. Some of you have an issue and you will run to man first when God said, I gave you the word right here. Then not only that, if God is in you, the Holy Spirit is speaking. The Holy Spirit is telling you, don't do that. But here it is, you got to go get 25 daggone different opinions from different people to, to, be, to, to formulate, to think that, is this really real? The Holy Spirit, you only need one voice to, com to confirm. And the Holy Spirit ain't going to never lie. 
Amen. God's word will never come back to him void. And not only that, the Holy Spirit ain't going to never lie. When he tell you don't do something, don't sign something, don't go with this person, don't go. I don't care what they offer. I don't care how sweet it is. See what I'm saying? You put sugar under the sun, it melts. Even sugar melt. Amen. I don't care how sweet it is. Salt look like sugar. <laughs> Let's keep that real. Amen. Verse 17. They are content. So let me bring it together. Because this is all with thus said. The list out of the mouth of God. You go, Jesus. He says, uh, starting from verse 16 to 24. From 16, for those coming in, he says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, do not listen to the words of the false prophets who prophesy to you. They are teaching you worthless things and are leading you into fertility. They speak a vision of their own mind and imagination, not truth from the mouth of the Lord. Verse 17, they are continually saying to those who despise me and my word, the Lord has said you will have peace. And they say to everyone who walks after the stubbornness of his own heart. No evil will come on you. See what I'm saying? See, sometimes people who prophesy to you or some, some people be prophesying, they'll, they'll come off like this. For example, someone who got false intentions may say, girl, the spirit of, or, or guy, they be say, brother, man, you a powerful brother. The hand of the Lord is all over on you. The hand of the Lord. I'm telling you, the Lord loves you. Okay? That's about right. You know? I'm just telling you what to listen for. Then sometimes it go further. You know you would be good. For real. You can go higher if you and I can come together and do some collaborations. Or we can, or let's, let's go over, let's come together and have lunch. I want to talk to you about a certain thing. Thus said the Lord. Okay. They want to invite you out to lunch for collaborations on your gift. How to tweak your gift now. Hear me? So you go. They all talking how deep you are. You know the conversation is good. You know they nice. They got smile on the outer. You, you, you feel like they harmless. But in the spirit realm, they, they're looking at you as what to gain off your gift. See, we got to pay attention to people's purpose in your life. You got to pay attention to why a person enters into your present from the first place. I ain't saying getting all scared, skittish, itish. Because see, when you're walking with the Lord and you have a relationship with him, I'm going to tell you right now, the Holy Spirit will speak louder than your flesh could ever speak, honey. When people, he will let you know, back up. Don't even get too close to them. Or he will let you know, oh, it's safe. Amen. Y'all have to pay attention and open your eyes. Some of y'all just so willingly trust. Y'all just, y'all be, and, and see, this is the, this is the, Deceit of the devil. Because this is the lie that some of us have heard. Through, you know, no matter, um, help me Holy Spirit, no matter how you've came into uh, your relationship or your encounter with the Lord. Some of us think that because you are a Christian or you Christ, you know, you're a child of God. That you're supposed to be trustworthy and nice to everybody. You're supposed to give to everybody. You're supposed to accept what anybody do. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Because Jesus ain't even do that. Amen. Jesus ain't accept everything. You see how in the scriptures he got mad <coughs> when they was peddling false lies and they were peddling money in the temple. In God's house. What'd he do? Flip tables over and roll them out of here. So he didn't accept everything. Some of y'all need to stop accepting everything. Especially when somebody want to try to use the word of God against you. Amen. You got to stop. Try, you have to pay attention and listen. You see what I'm saying? You know what God said. And if God is saying 
what he's saying to you and it's a line up with his word and what they saying they just trying to keep pumping you up who you going to listen to the pump up or you going to listen to the truth the word regardless of what it's going to cost you and how it feels amen let's move on so we can get through it um verse 17 let me pick back up there it says they are continually saying to those who despise me and my word the lord has said you have you will have peace and they say to everyone who walks after the stubbornness of his own heart no evil will come to you verse 18 but who among them have stood in the counsel of the lord that he will perceive and hear his word who has marked his word noticing and observing and paying attention to it and has actually heard it so god is basically saying for those people that may come and tell you things that ain't true or trying to manipulate what thus said the lord he says who among them has stood in my counsel mean really stood in my presence what are the proof that they have that they can really show and exemplify out of their life that I've really said that. See, one thing, thank you, Holy Spirit. One thing about the Lord. If somebody tell you something about the Lord, trust me, first of all, or if someone trusts you, help me, Holy Spirit, let me slow it down. If someone tell you something saying, thus said the Lord, number one, God going to tell you first. And hopefully you're paying attention. Anything that someone else, a human body tells you, either it's confirmation and revelation see what i'm saying it's going to confirm and it's going to reveal real simple you should not be i don't care what church organization you're with it should never be you sitting under any pastor bishop evangelist minister whoever and it should be the first time you heard something that is in reference to your spirituality sitting under them if it is then there's houston there's a problem there's a problem because the pastor and the minister is only really to confirm and reveal what's already there. If they telling you stuff and you just realizing it, you need to backtrack yourself and backtrack your position and really backtrack within your heart how you really feel about the Lord. And if you really love him, like you say, you did. Or if you are really a, or if you really a counterfeit. Did you fall into the trap of letting the spirit of the counterfeits fall on you? Amen. Ooh, it is tight up in the atmosphere globally because I could feel it. But we're going to move on. Verse 19. Let me slide down. Let's go, Holy Spirit. He says, Behold, the temptest of the Lord has gone forth in wrath. A whirling tempest, it will whirl and burst on the heads of the wicked. And I'm going to read verse 20. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has set in motion and accomplished the thoughts and the intentions of his heart. Meaning, when God is ready, when he's sick and tired of being sick and tired of seeing how some people have mistreated his flock, his sheep, and his children... I'm going to tell you right now, he ain't holding back until he accomplished what's in his heart. Amen. It says, in the last days, you will clearly understand. It. That was verse 20. Verse 21 said, I did not send, this is God, I did not send these counterfeit prophets, yet they ran. I did not speak to them, yet they prophesied. Basically, he's telling you. I did not send them, yet they ran, meaning they were quick to run. And see, that's another thing, quick. If someone keep on pressuring you, and, and we can kind of um, put, you know, um, compare this to a salesperson. Sometimes a salesperson's job, yes, is the pressure to get you to buy a, per uh, to get you to buy a certain product, correct? 
and so they're advertising this product and this that and the third and they telling you how good it'll be some of them won't even demonstrate it but their mouth because they got the gift of gab they can convince you because there are some good salesperson that they can convince you with their mouth before you even ask any further about a demonstration y'all need to pay attention like i say spiritually amen so when god is saying he did not send these counterfeit prophets they ran see when something is quick Thank you, Holy Spirit, for keeping me back on track. When someone presents you something and it's a pressure, like, like you got to hurry up and do this. Come on, we got to do this now. You got to make a decision. Put your name on the dotted line. Hurry up let's, so we can sign this deal. Sign these papers. Uh, you need to back up. You need to back up. God will only move at your pace and he ain't rushing i told somebody the turtle went always wins the race amen there are only specific times on specific areas that where god will balance you out to let you know when you have to enter in and most likely that's doing warfare when you have to be quick about something, especially when the enemy's up against you but when you're dealing with people and the spirits because remember we're dealing with the spirits on people as they say, anything is too good to be true. Nine times out of ten, it ain't true. But when God is involved, it's, it's what he says. It's what he says and what he shows you. Amen. So you have to continue to trust in what God says and what God shows you. And what God is speaking unto you even through his people. You see what I'm saying? Because there's some good counterfeits up in here. You see what I'm saying? It is some good deceivers. And it's sad because I'm talking about the deceivers in the kingdom. I ain't even talking about the world. We ain't even talking about them yet. See what I'm saying? We ain't even talking about unbelievers. Because there's some good. Because they have good gifts too. And some of y'all can't even decipher if they really true either. Because you're not looking with the discerning of the spirit of the gifts of God. Amen. I'm telling you, the devil, he, trust me, like I told you before, he knows the Bible better than you. He knows every comma, every period. And he's going to challenge you on it. Let's move on. Verse 22, he says, but if they had stood in my counsel, then they would have caused my people to hear my words. Then they would have turned my people from their evil way and from the evil of their decisions and deeds. So see, False, false prophets, false people, whatever, they're not going to enter into the presence of God. Because if they truly enter into the presence of God, according to what they have, if they can grab your attention, then guess what? Trust me, the Holy Spirit is going to reveal them. And what does God say? It will cause the people to hear God's word and instead of hearing the counterfeit prophet word see a false prophet wants to get your attention a false teacher a false friend they want to keep your attention anything false especially what the enemy is doing is wanting you to keep your eyes on them and not focus too much on god they put the word they put a little sprinkle of the word just to keep you it's like a little taste like when you you know to keep your taste buds satisfied but they don't want you to get delivered they don't want you to really start being um to open your eyes and really see the truth about the matter so they they know how to speak in a way hallelujah they know how to speak in a way to keep you you know, they know how to put just enough of the word to keep you in their presence, which really is making you be spiritually crooked and not spiritually upright. Amen. Think about it. Um, verse 23, he says, and am I God who is at hand, says the Lord, and not a God far away? Can anyone... Verse 24, 23 and 24. Can anyone hide himself in secret places so that I cannot see him, says the Lord. Do I not fill heaven and earth? So God is basically saying, ain't nobody can escape his eye. So when the Lord is speaking unto you and you're having a relationship and he show you things. He's really saying, why don't you trust what you see when what you see doesn't show what they say? 
when people are saying things to you, because sometimes people will say stuff and we'd be like, nah, you know, we always want to give the benefit of the doubt. We'll throw that out there as believers quick. Because you're a believer, you just throw that card out there quick instead of really, instead of really understanding, searching, and checking it out. Somebody throw a deal at you, some of y'all so quick to jump on it. Because you keep, some of y'all think, because they have craftmatically told you and they're using the words of the scriptures, you think it's a good deal. You think it's thus said the Lord when it ain't. Then you got yourself tangled up in some stuff. And so God is saying, why don't you trust what you see when what you, when what you see is not showing what they say? See what I'm saying? Some people say they love the Lord, but their heart is wicked. It's far from them. You heard me say it many a times. And then some of y'all want to keep excusing it. Y'all want to keep putting a, a late, y'all want to keep putting a cover on it. It'll be all right. They'll get it, you know. You know, I'm going to keep praying for them. Yeah, God don't want us to stop praying, but you don't have to be repetitive, especially when it comes to spirits on people. Amen. Some of y'all hanging with people that is not for you. But because either they're blood related or because a part of you like them, you still want to hold on to them when God is telling you to let them go. Trust him to deal with them. Give, him, give them over to him. You won't do it. Because you think because you got a degree or you because you think you so memorized scripture, you holy, five, sanctified, can speak in tongues, roll around, tear up 20 rolls, that you know what you're doing. Some of you don't know how to fight in the spirit realm. You're trying to fight a spiritual battle in your, nat in the, in your natural. So you won't let it go. Amen. Some of y'all like people that pump you up. So you don't want to let them go. You don't know they ain't pumping you up with the word of God. They pumping you up with full of air. And eventually, just like a balloon, if you let it get too high or if something of the climate hits the balloon, what does it does? It pops. You thinking some people really, really fool you. Yeah, they pumping you up. Sure, they pumping you up to get higher and higher so you can crash and burn. Amen. Let's go down to verse 30 to 32. I'm going to go through it right now. Hallelujah. Therefore, behold, hear this. I am against the counterfeit prophets, says the Lord. I am descending on them with punishment. These prophets who steal my words from one another, imitating the words of the true prophet. That's what God said. He said, I am descending on them with punishment. So you better watch these imitators. He said, they steal words, meaning it ain't God's word. And it, guess what? It ain't even their word. They steal them from one another. Imitating the words of the true prophets. He says, hear this. I am against the prophets, says the Lord, who uses their own deceitful tongue and say, thus says the Lord. I say it all the time because it's right here. Y'all better check these folks out. And now that we're on technology and we're on social media, y'all better check these groups out. Then he says, hear this. I am against those who have prophesied false and made up dreams, says the Lord, and have told them and have made my people err and go astray by their lies and by their reckless boasting. Yet I did not send them or command them, nor do they benefit and enhance the life of these people in the slightest way, says the Lord. That what God said. I was like, go ahead, God. We got the tiger devil by the tail now. Again, some of y'all think people got your best interests. God will let you know because those in your life that really have your best interests at heart, they ain't even all that loud. I'm talking about their spirit. Their spirit ain't all that loud. Because they come in and they will fit right in and they do what thus said the Lord for you and they out. They ain't the type of people always got to be in your life, got to have credit, got to be seen, got to want something from you, got to hitch a ride on your gift. 
God always pulling on you to do stuff. Always want you to, always trying to drain the gift in you. The anointing or drain the anointing. I'm sorry because the gift is forgiven anyway. But I'm going to say this to you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He told me I could say it. Y'all better watch. Even, with, even within giving, you got to watch what you sow into. Because like the Bible says, yes, what a man sow, he will reap. Not just only into things, but into people too. What you sow into someone, you will reap. Amen. So if your heart, even if you may, you may be saying things, people say things to tickle your ear because they're tickling your flesh. Because remember, like I told you, your feelings and your and all that your emotions resides in your flesh. So some people are very chas chas charismatic. They can say things to get you all pumped up and feeling all good. Which is a distraction. Amen. Which can be a distraction. So I'm telling you, right now, pay attention. Thus said, y'all better watch this, thus said the Lord, because God's saying, I ain't say all that. I didn't bring them into your life for all that. Y'all need to ask God for the purpose of a person. See, it's a reason God connects people. He uses us to bless one another, to help one another. Real simple. If someone is in your life and they like, they it feel like they hitching a ride on your hip. You know how like a mama carries a baby on their hip. You too big to have somebody who's 30, 40 years old. And I'm talking spiritually trying to ride on your hip because of your gift. And see, if you caught up in what they say and not looking at the purpose and looking at what they really showing, because then the question God going to say, why don't you trust what you see? When what they see doesn't show what they say. They say they'll be there for you. They say they got your back. They say they'll fight for you. They say they praying for you. See what I'm saying? But it ain't showing in their life. Because anything of God will show. Because God, we are the light. God ain't hiding from nobody. Come to me, all those. He telling everybody. That's heavy. That's, that's heavily, heavy, mm, that is heavy. Help me, Holy Spirit. My tongue getting tired. That are heavy burden. But anybody. Whether you heavy burden. You need wisdom. You need knowledge. Come to God. He ain't hiding. He giving it away for free. You don't have to counterfeit. You don't have to be sneaky about it. Whatever is in you is for you. Whoever God has created you to be, it's for you to shine, baby. You ain't supposed to fit in. You're supposed to stand out. But see, because we are so accustomed, and some of us have been grown up under and been taught things, you see what I'm saying? And we're so used to it. You're so set in your ways that your mind can't accept nothing new. And then when God, when the newness of the Lord try to come into your life, you so quickly dismiss it or you so quickly say that that's not of God. That must be of the devil. And it hurts God's feeling when here it is. He's clearly bringing to you what you said. What you've been praying for. And then when he show you things based on what you've said. And what you've been praying for. But then some of you, like I said, somebody can say anything to you and you'll accept it. Somebody can do anything to you and you'll accept it. And God says, why don't you trust what you see? You know that's not right. Why are you still hanging with that person? Why are you still in that group? Why are you still connected? Why are you still working there? I done told you I got better for you, but you don't trust me like. You say you do. See, the trust that you had when you received salvation, honey, babies, we, you need more. You need more trust. You need a higher level of trust in God in your relationship. The faith that you had when you got started with your journey with the Lord, because after those of us and um, those of us that know what I'm talking about, after a while, you have to keep renewing your faith, just like renewing your wedding vows. You have to renew your covenant because the reason why is because new levels is new devils, new seasons. You get through this season. Those that, that was the old devils on level five. Now you on level 10. It's, some, it's a whole nother game. There's some whole new devils up there. See what I'm saying? Amen. And next scripture was James chapter 5, verse 8. 
which says you too be patient, strengthen your hearts, keep them energized and firmly committed to God because the Lord, because the coming of the Lord is near. Real simple. Keep your heart focused on God, men and women of God. Keep it energized. Keep your fire lit. Get excited. You see what I'm saying? Be grateful for every day that the Lord wakes you up because he didn't have to do it, but he loves you with an everlasting love, a love that your mind can't even conceive. Amen. God knows you all jacked up, but his love is not human love like we give to one another. See, our love is conditional. God is unconditional. But to learn to, but to, learn to love unconditional, you got to have a relationship with the Lord. You cannot be unconditional in this conditional flesh. You cannot do unconditional stuff. You need help from the Holy Spirit. You need help. Because see, when you start trying to do it in your flesh, it becomes fleshy and messy. And guess what? God ain't nowhere in it. See, everything of God is pure and blameless in his sight. It ain't fleshy and messy, tangled up, frustrated, all dirty. It ain't none of that. Amen. Amen. Also, I want to share with you something I've read in my um, devotional book. Hallelujah. Uh, my pet. Um, yeah, I had this book for a while. I'm pet my pastor. One of my pastors. Well, only well, I don't, you know, I got core people. I claim them, but according to the my pastor gave me this book, him and his wife. Wonderful. I've been reading it. God has steered me to read it. But let me um, read this to you, this little passage. It's about when you're struggling with sin. Imagine this. You, you're serious about sin. I know you are because you love the Lord. You're suited up wearing sweats and boxing gloves. You're here to do business and knock out sin out of your life. Sometimes it feels like sin is coming at you fast and you're jabbing it out of your face like a boxer on a punching bag. Your fists are moving with fury and that red teardrop shape uh, bag is bobbing away. Jab, jab, jab. But the second you take your eye off the bag, the second you get tired and the second you whiff, the bag comes back to smack you. If you're not careful, it'll knock you to the floor. This is like sin. I hope you're nodding along because I know you feel it too. As humans, we don't have enough power or strength to knock sin out for good. We need the Lord to shape our hearts to a new desire. We need his Holy Spirit to guide us to a different conclusion we need to be rid of our flesh and filled with more of him. We partner with him to root out every bit of sin. I need women. I never feel more helpless than when I'm trying to combat sin with just willpower. I'm going to say it again. You, I never feel more hopeless when I'm trying to combat sin with just willpower. It feels like I'm going into a war without any kind of defense it feels like a losing battle because it is a losing battle humans were born into sin like a birth defect and we aren't able to just pull off ourselves um, to pull ourselves up by our good christian bootstraps and overcome it Oswald Chambers said, sanctification means to be intensively focused on God's point of view. It means to secure and to keep all the strength of our body, soul, and spirit for God's purpose alone. Sanctification means being made one with Jesus so that the nature that controlled him will control us. Being made like Jesus means being willing to have everything that is not of God taken off and everything that is of God put on. I'm going to say it again. Being made like Jesus means being willing to have everything that is not of God taken off and everything that is of God put on. But we do this in God's power, not in your power. Amen. God had the ability to put life back into Jesus' bones and he can bring life to us when we're succumbing to the things that lead to death. 
And don't make the mistake of believing that the end of sin isn't death. It is. But God has promised us life with him. We need to take hold of that belief and allow it to propel us to Christ's likeness, leaving behind that which isn't like him. In your struggle against sin, you're bound to get tired. That doesn't mean you're not enough. But when you feel worn out, just remember that God breathes life where there is none and he is a God of victory. His victory is your victory and Jesus has overcome sin. We just need to abide in him and allow him to do the dismantling. If we yield our will to his, no matter how painful, we will eventually be more like him. And that's the goal anyway. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I love it. Being made like Jesus is being willing to have everything that is not of God taken off and everything that is of God put on. We have to do that, men and women of God. We have to practice that. Amen. So I have some other pointers I have wrote down. As humans, we are often we often want to cover our bases, assuring ourselves that our decisions are right, but we must not lose ourselves in the analysis. Find your strength in the leadership of the Holy Spirit and move forward with confidence. So when God shows you something in confidence, he showed you, he showed you right. Don't disappoint God and, and don't be toying with stuff, especially when he done showed you right. Why don't you trust what you see when what you see doesn't show what they say? Especially, like I said, we're dealing with the spirits on people. Amen. Excuse me. Christ died to heal our relationship with God, but the Holy Spirit enabled us to live for him. Our relationship is with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And in our lives, each works in concert with the other persons of the Trinity. Amen. And I told y'all before, and God said to tell you again, Satan tricks. Let me remind you of the devil's tricks. Number one, he tempts us when we are vulnerable, hungry, sick, and preparing for ministry. Number two, he emphasizes choices based on our desires. And number three, he misuses the scriptures. Oh, that brings me back because the last video, I said I would come back to it on a point on how Jesus, um, the Satan misuses the scripture. I got it right here. I got it. See, see, the first time I, I I didn't have it, but I got it right here out of this other book about spiritual warfare. Oh, I got, I got it now. I was reading something in it. Let me share it with you. He get right back up now. And then I was on a prayer line and I couldn't get them, but I got it now. Okay. Now, uh oh, hold up. I don't want to lose my place on my notes. Let me um scroll back. Okay, here we go. I was reading something in this book about spiritual warfare. And I, I mentioned when Jesus um, was tempting. I mean, when Satan was tempting Jesus. Remember that story when he um, was tempting Jesus? He took him and he was saying, you know, he'll do all this. This is when Jesus was fasting. Okay. And this is what he said. Let me get the, um, at the part when, um, hold up. I got, I'm, I'm just work with me one second so I can tie it all together because I don't need to read everything. I highlighted some things. He said, okay, like I said. Oh, help me, Holy Spirit, real quick. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Help me, Holy Spirit. Okay. The enemy, this is when, remember, like I said, this is the story some of you may know. I think it's in Matthew Matter of fact, let's go there real fast. Oh, I got to get this because he think I'm not going to say it. I'm going to say it now. 
I'm going to give it to you now. This is a way that when you are listening to folks, because we're dealing with spirits, when people have the spirit of the enemy on them, not of God, how they can manipulate the word. You see what I'm saying? You got to go a little deeper into listening and to um, interpreting and understanding the word of God. Okay, here it is. Oh, let's get busy. This is in Matthew chapter 4, verse 5 through 7. I'm going to read it in the NIV version since it popped up in that version. It says, Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written. He will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Okay, I'm going to read it again because I think some of y'all missed it. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had said to him on the highest point of the temple, if you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down for it is written. He will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Listen, but Jesus answered him saying, it is also written. Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Oh, I got the tiger by the tail now. So, here we go. You see the enemy, like we say. He knew the scripture because that is scripture. He said, for it is written. He will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. So he told Jesus, throw yourself down, for it is written. See, he knows the word. That, now, that's word, okay? But, here come the but. I'm going to read it to you right now. How does Christ deal with the devil's argument? Now, first and foremost... Does Jesus question the validity of the scripture that Satan quoted? No. He ain't, he ain't question the validity of it because that was word, right? But he answered back with another scripture to expose Satan's motive saying the scripture he said. So it goes to this. Just because we can quote Bible verses to support our view, that doesn't necessarily mean we have arrived at the truth. Bible verses can be taken out of contact and their meaning twisted. Like prisoners of war, if you torture them long enough, you can get verses to confess almost anything. In this passage, Satan is taking verses out of contact and twisting their meaning to his own purpose. The whole truth is not found in one verse. It is found in balancing all that scripture has to say about a matter. The more important the, more important the issue, the more essential it is that we look at multiple passages of scripture. Instead of saying... The devil is wrong. Jesus said, on the other hand, it is written. See what I'm saying? And quotes another relevant verse. He clarifies the truth by balancing it with another verse to prevent taking the point too far. So basically what Jesus did in Matthew 4, 5 through 7, which we need to do against people and spirits that always coming up saying, thus said the Lord to you. You see what I'm saying? And like the word of God said, see, when you quote the scripture, yes, you speak the word back to the devil and he will flee. You got to speak the word to expose his motive. What he said was true because that's word. But the motive of his heart, the enemy, was not real because he twisted it. Why? To fit his own benefit. Like false prophet and false people that are in your life. You better pay attention with your spiritual eyes to what they say and listen carefully. 
And then when you answer them back, you answer them like he said, but hold up. It is written. Do not put the Lord your God to test. Guess what? And after that, the enemy left because he could he ain't had nothing to come back on that. Amen. All he had now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me to let your people hear to share that with them. When you are into when you are reading and studying and when you are combating spirits on people. Amen. Let me move on. Hallelujah. I have eight ways. Oh, we got I told you we got work to do. Eight ways. To resist the devil. And then I'm done. And then I got the conclusion and we're done. Let me go through my eight ways. Number one. That's why. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's why he told me to share that with you guys. Because it leads right into this. Number one. Do not engage Satan in your own strength. You need to draw the power and even the desire to resist sin from Jesus Christ. And you need to do this every day. Certainly, that soul that engages against any old or new temptations without new strength, new influences from on high, will fall before the power of the new temptation. Commune with God, be on guard, be humble, and do all these things, but do not rely on them in battle. Instead, rely on Christ. For 1 Corinthians, because I got scripture to back it up, for 1 Corinthians Chapter 10, verse 13, the Amplified Version says, No temptation, regardless of its source, has overtaken or enticed you that is not common to human experience, nor is any temptation unusual or beyond human resistance. But God is faithful to his word. He is compassion and trustworthy, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability to resist. But along with the temptation he has in the past and is now, and will always provide the way out as well so that you will be able to endure it without yielding and will overcome temptation with joy. Hallelujah. Number one, so do not engage Satan in your own strength. Number two, pray constantly. Prayer is a shelter to the soul, a sacrifice to God, and a scourge to the devil. So pray and pray constantly. Tell God of your own inabilities to detect and respond to temptation. Tell him that you are utterly dependent upon his grace. Tell God that Christ's blood has been applied to you. Tell God that you are his child. Ask God to deliver you from the temptations for the glory for his name. For 1 Thessalonians 5, chapter 16, verse, um, I'm sorry, First, for 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 through 18, the Amplified Version says, Rejoice always and delight in your faith. Be unceasing and persistent in prayer. In every situation, no matter what the circumstances, be thankful and continually give thanks to God, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Pray constantly. That was number two. Number three, continue communing with God. Number three, continue communing with God. It is, it is as you join in communion with God that he gives you strength to resist Satan's attack. A soul high in communion with God may be tempted, but will not easily be conquered. I'm going to say that again. A soul that is high in communion with God may be tempted, but will not easily be conquered such a soul will fight it out to the death take full advantage of god's means of grace for psalms chapter 84 verse 11 the amplified version says for the lord god is a sun and shield the lord bestows grace and favor and honor no good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly amen the, number three all continue to commune with God. Number four, be constantly on God. A secure soul is a soul in a position to be led astray and ensnared. That soul will not watch against temptation, will certainly fall before the power of the temptation. Satan strengthens his assaults when the soul grows drowsy and careless. So be constantly on God. 
Watchfulness is nothing else but the soul running up and down, to and fro, busy everywhere. It is the heart busted and employed with diligent observation of what comes from within us and of what comes from with us, with us and into us. Amen. For Mark chapter 13, verse 33, the Amplified Version says, Be on guard and stay constant alert and pray, for you do not know when the appointed time will come. Amen. That's number four. Be constantly on guard. Number five, be ruled by the word. Make the word of God your rule and authority and live in obedience to all it says. It will keep you walking straight and guard you from all manner of temptation. When men throw off the word, then God throws off them. And then Satan takes them by the hand and leads them into snares at his pleasure. For Deuteronomy chapter 27 verse 26, the Amplified Version says, Curse is he who does not confirm the words of this law by doing them keeping them, taking them to heart as the rule of his life. And all the people shall say, Amen. Hallelujah. That's, um, that's number five. Be ruled by the word. Number six, be aware of grieving the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that gives the Christian the ability to discern Satan's temptation and to see his hand in and behind life circumstances. If you grieve the spirit, you drive off the one who ministers involves guarding you against Satan attack. For Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30, the Amplified Version says, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit of God, but seek to please him by whom you were sealed and marked, branded as God's own for the day of redemption, the final deliverance from the consequences of sin. Amen. That's number six. Beware of grieving the Holy Spirit. Number seven, labor of wisdom, labor for wisdom. There is a great difference between knowledge and wisdom, between accumulating facts and applying scriptures to those facts so they become wisdom. It is not the Christian with the most knowledge, but the Christian with the most wisdom who is equipped to battle Satan's temptation. Amen. Is not the is not the Christian or the believer with the most knowledge, but the Christian or the believer with the most wisdom who is equipped to battle Satan. Satan's temptation for first Peter chapter five. Hold up. Where's my verse at? It says, be sober, well balanced, and self-disciplined, be alert and cautious at all times, that the enemy of yours, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, fiercely hungry, seeking someone to devour. The verse had disappeared, but y'all know it's in first Peter chapter five. Somebody will find the correct one. Number eight is stay humble. A humble heart would rather lie in the dust than rise to prominence by sinful means. It would prefer to lose everything than to sin and be left with a guilty conscience. The humble person is neither drawn in by what Satan offers nor terrified by his threats. For Philippians chapter 2 verse 3, the Amplified Version says, Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit through factional motive or strife, but with an attitude of humility, being neither arrogant nor self-righteous, regard others as more important than yourself. Amen. So the eight ways to resist the devil are, number one, do not engage Satan in your own strength. Number two, pray constantly. Number three, continue communing with God. Number four, be constantly on guard. Number five, be ruled by the word. Number six, beware of grieving the Holy Spirit. Number seven, labor for wisdom. And number eight, stay humble. Stay humble. Hallelujah. Stay humble. So, Holy Spirit is right. He is, he, I feel he's almost done with me. So, in conclusion, family, everyone sees what you appear to be, but few experience what you really are. The word friend is a label that anyone can try on, but you decide who is best suited to wear it. Choose wisely. 
the most dangerous amongst us comes dressed as angels and we learn too late that they are the devil in disguise. So always pay attention as time passes because you will begin to see people for who they really are and not who they pretend to be for which then the Lord may say, why don't you trust what you see when what you see doesn't show what they say? Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm going to end all of this with a song. The Holy Spirit say end it because it was a lot of meat. And we're going to end it with this song. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't you trust what you see when what you see doesn't show what they say? Amen. Give me one second, family. So it won't fall. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God, we want to see your kingdom here. Hallelujah. We got to let the spirit break out. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I do not own the rights to any song that came forth here today. So, let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord God, with time with my social media family, Lord God. I humbly come to you thanking you, Lord God, for this word to help us to draw closer unto you and to continue to seek ye first the kingdom. So all will be added unto us, but also, Lord God, to open our eyes so that we can see the wonderful things in your law and turn our eyes from worthless things so that you can preserve our life according to your word. Hallelujah. Lord God, I thank you for your grace and your mercy. I thank you, Lord God, for your faithfulness and your love that you always give to a people that is so undeserving. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for still being willing to work with us even through some of the messes that we've made. Forgive us, Lord God, for our sins. Forgive us when we've been disobedient. Forgive us for what's in us, Lord God, that we won't release, Lord God, that is not of you. Forgive us, Lord God, for turning the other way and not speaking and helping our neighbors and loving them as you commanded in the name of Jesus. Forgive us, Lord God, for the things that we have said and done, Lord God, that is not contrary to your word. Forgive us, Lord God, for the things that we have done to others, Lord God, that was not commissioned or ordered by you. Forgive us, Lord God. Hallelujah. Forgive us, Lord God, for being disobedient, even delayed disobedient when we didn't do what you asked us to do at the, pres at the present moment that you said do it. Forgive us, Lord God. Wash us and help us, Lord God, to get it right, Lord God. Hallelujah. To have an obedient heart, Lord God, unto you. Also, Lord God, right now I ask that you continue to send the ministering angels right now all over the world globally to all the singles, the divorced, the widow, the broken hearted, Lord God, to, to protect and preserve the children, to send the angels to comfort those who have suffered the loss of loved ones. Also send the ministering angels to comfort those that may be homeless, incarcerated in the name of Jesus. Lord God, send the ministering angels to work on some of us who have a nasty attitude, have a nasty nasty walk, have a nasty talk. Hallelujah. Lord God, send the ministering angels to those of your people that are trying to hold your hand, trying to walk with you, but hold hands with the devil. Hallelujah. Send the ministering angels, Lord God, to create in us and help clean us up so we can have a clean heart and renew in us a right spirit. Hallelujah. Lord God, send the ministering angels to help renew our mindset, Lord God. Help us to clean us out. Help us to stop saying things and doing things that is common contrary to your word and your will for our life in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I ask that you continue to send the ministering angels to do their work, Lord God, to help your people. But also, Lord God, even though you're sending the angels, Lord God, help us, Lord God, to be able to recognize the help that you are sending unto us. Help, Lord God, help us to stay in position, Lord God, to receive, to believe, and to receive the help from you in the name of Jesus. Lord Lord God, help us, Lord God, to really trust what we see when we see doesn't match up to what they say in the name of Jesus and give us the holy boldness, Lord God, to say yes and let our yes be yes and let our no be no in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I decree and declare over your people today that they will keep their fire, their desire lit unto you in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that everyone under the sound of my voice, Lord God, they will stay in position to receive and believe, Lord God, that you are God all by yourself. You are Alpha. You are Omega. You are the beginning and the end and you have done and gave your son to die for us lord god you still give grace and mercy to a people that is so undeserving in the name of jesus and lord god we don't take it lightly we are very grateful that you still love us like you do and now lord god even though we may separate lord god we may leave this platform but we are not leaving your presence we're going to still keep praises for you in our mouth throughout the day in the name of jesus Jesus. Lord God, have your way in and through everyone and everything that's on this platform today. And anything that is not of you, Lord God, it will be cast away. It will have to bow down and yield unto the name of Jesus and to the will, Lord God, that you have placed over your people. Hallelujah. Also, Lord God, send the ministering angels to 
to minister to the hearts of these governmental leaders and officials and the spiritual leaders, Lord God, that you are rising up or that you have already installed in place because, Lord, you hold the heart of everyone in your hand. Hallelujah. You hold the whole world in your hand and you could turn it every which way you want to turn it. But regardless, Lord God, of how you turn it, Lord God, I ask that you continue to help us to trust in you, whether we like it or not for everything was made by you for you and we give you all the glory and all the praise and everyone under the sound of my voice who loves the lord got a serious relationship with them and will not back away will not dumb down what the lord has done for you say amen 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 hallelujah it is done it is finished it is done. Why don't you trust what you see when what you see doesn't show what they say? Amen. Hallelujah. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let me see who on and then I'm done. Hallelujah. I'm just going to touch lightly. Thank y'all for joining me. Um, those that may have came in late, you can review the video here on Facebook or you can come over and to my YouTube page, please subscribe. And you can also see the video on spiritualincrease.com. All will be uploaded hopefully within the hour. And also someone would have shared this video in a group that I'm in, Soldiers on Fire for Christ, because they are soldiers on fire for Christ. Yep, I said it, they are soldiers on fire for Christ. And if you are in need of prayer, Hallelujah. If you are in need to for someone to stand in agreement for what the Lord is doing in your life, you can come over and send an email request over there to soldiers on fire for Christ at gmail.com. Real simple. Don't be an island by yourself. If the spirit of the Lord is tugging on you, you need to discern the spirit for those because we have prayer intercessors boy we uh, soldiers on fire that the gift is there it's no way that your your needs can't be met amen but you have to be serious amen because these people are willing to cover and commune and it's not about knowing your business but to be honest your business is their business our business is each other's business because we are supposed to care and love and help one another amen so you can um come on over there and check them out amen hopefully that will be a good um fit for you so let me see who on and then i'm out i don't see nobody on hallelujah oh sister robin on hi sister robin sister robin on hallelujah sister kim on how y'all doing oh it's so good to see y'all uh oh they're getting stuck hold up i think i'm touching too much i ain't touching nothing hallelujah Thank you, Jesus. It's so good. Thank y'all for being on with me. Uh-oh. I see a little bit of something. I see something over here. Pray to the Lord, church. Oh, y'all do my heart so good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So I done held y'all hostage, but hopefully you can share this video and uh, be a blessing to someone because it has a lot. I know I gave a lot of tools. I hope that uh, it will help and you will apply it to your life because I'm definitely have been I had to apply it first so um because I'm not gonna come on here and give you something that I haven't done yet because you heard with us said the Lord and the scriptures amen so I love y'all so much God bless y'all again you can go to my YouTube page and subscribe. You can come over to my uh, website, um, spiritualincrease.com. Come on over to Soldiers on Fire. For Christ, someone will upload the message there. God bless you. Thank you for your time. You could have been anywhere else, but I praise and honor and thank God for you being with me. Because I need you. You need me. Hey, that's just the way God made it to be. People need people. But, here come the but. That is, we have the ability because God gave us free will to choose wisely. You see what I'm saying? Who we will sup with, who we will connect with, knit with, and cross with. Amen. So I love y'all. Continue to uh, build your relationship with the Lord. I'm not sure when the next time I'll be out. But remember, I am praying for you and I'm watching. I'm covering you and your family. And um, 
you know, just be mindful of this platform. Be mindful of what you post. Because trust me, you heard what I said. The devil knows the scripture and he's watching too. Amen. He's watching what you post. Because what you post is basically like what you're saying. Amen. So um, just be mindful. Live, love, laugh, and be happy. Stop being so deep. Some of y'all being overly deep. Y'all overly think. You need to let God be God and be obedient. Do what God says when he says and how he said. Keep on working with forgiveness. When you forgive someone, you cannot speak. You cannot bring it up to that person. You can't talk about it to nobody. And you have to learn how to forget about it. Amen. And you got to repent too. When you repent, you got to be honest about the sin that you're repenting. Put it up against the word of God, which we know it ain't going to stand. So that means it got to go. And if that sin is connected to a person, that person has to go in the name of Jesus. Then you got to change your lifestyle about. You got to turn from it. That's number. You got to turn from it. Number two. You got to make sure you got to just ignore it and turn, but then you got to change your whole lifestyle about it. Get up out of the vicinity of that sin. Amen. That's true repentance threefold. Amen. So it is 2021. Continue to speak life and keep moving forward. It is finished. It is done. It's still all about him. And no matter what goes on throughout life and as we're dealing with this pandemic, stand. Simply trust and never doubt God, but always be fact, F-A-C-T, always be faithful, available, committed, and teachable. Amen. Love y'all so much. God bless y'all. Some of you I'll be talking to soon. Hallelujah. I know some of you I am behind on my calls. I got to call y'all and get what get up with y'all. Amen. And um the Lord, I, 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 I've been slacking with that. Some of you, I really need to, you know, just check on you. I need to hear your spirit to make sure that you are okay. Because it does my heart, my heart joy to make sure that you are okay. Your family okay. I ain't saying we got to be on the phone all night. But we going, some of you, I've started, you know, we can go. Because, you know, it's just how, when you haven't spoken to some of God's people in a while, I tell you. And uh, as always, stay out the TV. Some of y'all is, you need to just be informed and not consumed. But remember, when you are building your relationship, whatever God shows you, you got to trust him. You got to believe him because God does things his own way. So when he say, why don't you trust what you see when what you see doesn't show what they say? Amen. It doesn't show what they say. So you got to be mindful and check everything out according to the will of God and the word of God. Amen. Don't get me started. I feel like I want to jump. You know how you, you jump start the car? I can feel the Holy Spirit bubbling because he know I love him. I can go. Hey, y'all, we could be having all night, but nah. I know some of my core cool people on laughing like, uh-uh, we do not have that type of time. <laughs> but this is where I'm getting ready to get off. I'm going to eat, go sleep, and then get up and start calling and bothering some folks. Amen. So I love y'all so much. God bless y'all. Have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. And um, I'm, I'm coming down an avenue. Yes, Lord, I'm coming down an avenue near you, near some of you. Um, because the spirit of the Lord has been laying you on my spirit. And uh, just get ready. Amen. Just get ready. So again, you can review the video here. If some of you came in late, you can come over to my YouTube page. It'll, all of this will be done within an hour. I know somebody over there from Soldiers, they watching. Cause, uh, so I know it'll be uploaded over there. And then I have a website page, spiritualincrease.com. You can view the video here. God bless you. I love y'all so much. You know I don't want to let you go because you know I rambles on. I don't know when. I'm going to be back on, but I love my social media family. And for those of you that may be struggling, I'm, some of you I'm working with, you're really going through. We're going to make it because you know my faith is in God. We're going to make it. We God's people going to make it. I don't care what it look like. Amen. We're going to, whatever the enemy throws, you're going to fight and we're going to make it. That's non-negotiable and you don't speak nothing else. Amen. It's what God say. What God said. It is so. Amen. Greater is he that is within me, within you. Greater is he. The spirit in you is greater than he that is in the world. You better hold on and believe that. Amen. I love y'all so much. God bless y'all. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Some of you I will be getting with soon within the hour. Love you. God bless you and have a wonderful morning, noon, afternoon, and night.